Great. Um, thank you for having me. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is uh, an open source project I wrote called GIMP. Um, and I'm not really going to delve into the technical parts of it. Um, what I'm more interested in doing is talking about the story of, uh, I think, what is a successful open source project, um, and things that went right, things went wrong. Um, and I don't actually have all the answers about what makes a good open source project, or, or what succeeds, or what makes a successful one. Um, so part of why I'm presenting this is actually to get, to get some feedback from you, because I've reached a kind of a blocking point in this project too. Um, so if people here have you know, own their own open source projects that they've worked on, um, or have advice to give to me, I'm really open to that. That's why I'm here. Um, so I'm going to start by digressing completely. Um, so I began my life as a developer on ZX Spectrum. Um, and this is, if this screen I'd seen this about 30 years ago, I probably would have panicked. Now, 30 years later, it's, it's got a lot of kind of, you know, nice memories to it, so I kind of like looking at it. Um, the reason I, I, I have it here is because GIMP is a graphics manipulation pro program. Um, of when I was programming 30 years ago on ZX Spectrum, uh, one of the unique things about it was um, the screen was actually just a whole, a, a section of the memory that you could delve into and turn pixels on and off, um, you know, turn colors on and off. Uh, and I'm a front-end developer now. Back then I was probably a front-end developer too, I didn't know it. Um, and I wasn't really interested in manipulating uh, memory for kind of what a lot of people would have been. But what I really got a kick out of was making things happen on screen and all of that. But now 30 years later, as, as an actual working front-end developer, very rarely do I actually work at a pixel level or at a memory level. Um, I don't know any front-end developer who does. Um, if you're actually if you're doing a lot of work, you're going to be working in Photoshop, you're going to be working in, in SVG. Um, you don't actually touch pixels anymore in the same way that I, I used to touch it 30 years ago. But I had a problem in 2014, and that was that I was working on another open source project that I've done. Um, and what I wanted to do then, it was a Cordova project, and I wanted to build a, a build script that would package a Cordova app for iOS, for Android, for it, these kind of things. Um, and the, the build script was written in Node, which I'm happy working. Um, and what I, what I wanted to do was I had an icon file and when I hit build, I wanted to build that a correct size icon for Android, iOS, whatever. Um, and that's pretty easy to do. There's, there's graphics libraries out there for Node. But what annoyed me about them was that they were all had some kind of, they weren't all native JavaScript. There was going to be some um, C written C type language in there somewhere. So when you uh, downloaded the, the NPM package, it would have to build on your machine or you'd have to get some, some dependable on your machine for, for it there to work on. But what I wanted was uh, wants to know. It seemed like it didn't, didn't seem like a big problem. Was there a native, purely JavaScript um, application out there that would do an image manipulation like this in the command line? Um, in order just to, all I wanted to do was resize icons, and crop them, that kind of thing. Um, and I thought, hey, this wasn't something that there, this shouldn't be a big deal for JavaScript. So I did what everybody would do in this. I went on to Stack Overflow, and I asked a question, uh, and. The answer, I don't have it down here, it's kind of down below here off screen. Uh, the answer pretty quickly came back, came back to me that this didn't exist. Um, but quite handily, this guy kind of gave me some pointers as to, you know, if you were going to do it, this is what you need. Uh, go look here. So I went out hunting. And what I found was, in a way I can't explain to this day, uh, what I needed to do was I needed a, uh, a JavaScript library that would encode and decode PNG files, and I needed a JavaScript library that would uh, scale images, because scaling, you don't even want to try it yourself. Um, and I have no explanation why they existed. There was a pure JavaScript encoder and decoder. Um, it seemed to be written almost as, as an academic project, because it wasn't linked in with any other library. It just existed by itself, in theory. Uh, and the same with a, a JavaScript um, a function to scale and, and resize images. And they all worked on this, or both of them worked on this nice standard um, system for having the, the data structure of the, of the, the bitmap image that they, they, they spring out. So a couple of days later, I think, this was on the September 12th, 2014, and oh, the next day, September 13th, I actually said, hey, hey, I got it written. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, accepted my own answer, very good. Uh, 
so this was version zero of, of what became GIMP. Um, and I was really happy. It did everything I wanted to do. Um, and off I went into work. Um, now this is GIMP compared to uh, other applications that are out there for doing the same thing. So if you, if you want to use Node to, to do image manipulation, scale images, crop images, uh, do anything that you do in, in GIMP or Photoshop, uh, this is a Jim compares to them. So this is uh, the market leader sharp, higher, the more efficient, and woo, way down here is Jim. <laughs> so why is it useful? Well, it, it's useful because it scratches the itch that I had, which was that uh, each one of these need native dependencies installed on, on your on your computer, whereas this is just 100% JavaScript, so you can just install it. Uh, you don't need any kind of special permissions. You don't need. Um, it doesn't matter what system you're running on. It's it's all running there. So it would seem other people have the same image. Uh, so this is the download from NPN in 2014, and uh, this is it today. So it's at about 150,000 down, downloads a week, uh, which is, I think, a pretty successful library. Um, but one of the reasons it succeeded is because, well, one, it had this itch that, that I wanted to scratch, and other people obviously had the same, same itch. Um, and what I found was that by having it out there, and especially, I think, having the question on, on Stack Overflow, people saw it there uh, who were ha having the same question. And there was a bit of a community build up around it, that you would have people who uh, had a lot more experience in, in doing um, data manip manipulation than me. So you had a lot of people kind of volunteering a whole bunch of different, uh, <coughs> I'm going to have to exit this, how do I exit that area? Your escape key is, is a somewhere weird. <laughs> Will you do it for me? <laughs> oh, uh, so this, so it started off, it was just, just actually one function, crop, actually two, crop and, and, and resize. Um, and then over the course of drips and drabs over the course of years, you had people volunteering all of these uh, functions through doing all kinds of things. So it, to be honest, it, it's up there almost with something like GIMP and what it can do purely programmatically. Um, and it's there purely by people. Uh, every person seemed to have their own little thing that they could do or wanted it to do. And when I'd written this, originally I'd written it very simply, so it was, it was quite simple to, to plug in new methods as, as people went along. Um, so that, that's one nice thing. Now, Went back last night, and I can see people are using it. I'm going, people are using it because there's questions on Stack Overflow for it. Um, but unfortunately, life gets in the way. Um, so I don't know if people know, but I, I, I ran for the Green Party uh, a while back, and I'm still heavily involved. So your own life, or my own life at least, comes in the way and starts distracting from this thing which I really want to do. Um, and it's at the stage now where. <laughs> It was trying to lay on quite well, uh, but now there's 168 open issues. Um, it hasn't been released in a year. Uh, all the dependencies are out of date. Um, and while there, there was an active community of people who were willing to, you know, co you know contribute their own uh, methods that you know scratch their rich or that they, you know, they had done something because they wanted it done. Um, getting a community to actually maintain it in a real way, update dependencies, uh, you know, fix bugs. Uh, people will, will, I found, will, will drop a line saying, hey, there's this bug, I think you can fix it like this. But actually getting someone to write a piece of code for it is very difficult. Um, people who, who, who will um, might contribute a whole bunch, we write the whole thing in one go. Um, and you're kind of worried about whether you, you would, should accept something as big as that. Uh, because you, you, know, you might be introducing as many bugs as you fix. Um, and building the community, I think, because that's the stage we're at now, um, is the really hard part. Uh, the getting kind of the, 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 the methods in was quite an easy thing, but actually getting a community of people who have properly maintained it in a structured way is, is quite difficult. I had a bit of luck uh, yesterday uh, because 
uh, as it turns out, I work for Leia Healthcare, and as it turns out, Leia, I didn't even know it used this. Um, so when I said I was going to do this presentation, uh, my boss kindly offered a couple of days, uh, which he'd slip into some project for me to go and fix the dependencies on this. Um, so I don't know, and it's what, what I might ask you, I don't know if does every open source project ultimately need a commercial sponsor uh, in order to get the people there who will do the, the kind of the drudge maintaining work uh, beyond the kind of contributing things that you know scratch their personal edge. Um, and before I wrap up, I'm going to quickly go through this book. So this book is from 1999. Um, it's on open source projects, get the Cathedral and the Bazaar, um, and about kind of you know comparing open source projects versus uh, large proprietary projects. Um, and there's 19. I'm not going to go through all the 19. I'm going to pick out a few in particular um, tips for successful open source projects. This one uh, is very definitely true of GIMP. Uh, so every good work of software starts by scratching the developer's personal niche. That is, that is the, the history of GIMP. Um, and I think it's, it's the history of all of the great methods we've got. Um, this is exactly where I am now, because I don't want to drop the ball on GIMP. Uh, so when you lose interest, or in my case, when life kind of you know, comes in and, and, and takes away my time for it, uh, it's your duty to hand it over to a confident successor. And actually, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody who will maintain it and do the, the, the kind of a, the dog's work of, of doing proper releases and bug checking and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, treating your users as code developers is the least hassle route to rapid code improvement and effective debugging. This is really true. It's also true for, for the new methods that were added. Now, GEMP is quite unique in that you know, the, my users are literally code developers anyway. Um, my target markets are developers. So if people wanted a new feature, they could either properly describe what they want, or they could just hand over code. So that was one successful thing. Uh, this, also completely true. Release early, release often, and listen to your customers. Um, one of the things that really did work in, in, in this project was that it started off entirely MVP. It was literally the bare bones of what it should be. And then after that, I'd get kind of drips and drabs off uh, new methods. And my, my I had this in mind kind of a couple of years ago when I was doing this properly you know, you know, committed to it, um, this idea of releasing early, releasing early and release often. So every time almost that I would get, somebody would, would, would donate a, a new method, I'd make a release and get it out there. Because it wouldn't take a whole lot of time to just do a quick, a quick um, test and, and bat it out again. So I, I think this is something that kind of got a lot of traction. People would see that it was being actively developed. It was being released in, in, in small amounts so that bugs could be caught you know, pretty rapidly. Same thing. Um, and this is true too. Actually, the, the provided that, oh, I'm not even going to read it. Um, what, what the gist of it is trying to say is that there's an awful lot of communications work involved in running an open source project. Like the actual amount of code I've written in GIMP is pretty small. It was most of the work was actually in coordinating when people would, would come up with new code to, to put into it. Um, and negotiating between different people who, was, who had competing um, ideas for the same method, um, and you know, keeping the philosophy of, of, of how the API should work. Uh, so there was an awful lot of, of communication involved. And in fact, that kind of, if, if I, like I said at the beginning, like I didn't actually make the core methods, an awful lot of methods that came in, I didn't, didn't touch them. Um, but probably my largest contribution to the project was simply this communicating, coordinating it. That was a huge part of the work. Finally, I'll end on this, because uh, again, last night, I didn't realize GIMP was a, a Judge Dredd thing. Apparently, it stands for uh, Judge Impersonators, which is a, a great crime in Judge Dredd. So, thank you very much.